Nothing says St. John's Harbor like Signal Hill. It's become the signature shot of Newfoundland and Labrador's capital city, the hill and the little stone fortress called Cabot Tower. From here, the city was defended from the French. From here, the first transatlantic wireless signal was received. And just a stone's throw from here is where Bill Kelly grew up. Hi, everybody. I'm Pauline Thornhill. Well, I guess I don't have to remind too many people in this province about Bill Kelly. Bill was a land and sea host for eight years, and many would say he was the show's most colorful, with a style and presence that was uniquely Bill. Well, this week on Land and Sea, we'll tell you what's become of Bill Kelly, the man who fought as hard for the show he loved as he has for his own life. These days, Bill walks his dog around the pond he skated on as a boy. He grew up halfway down Signal Hill. His house was where the Geo Center is today. That was in the early 50s, when Signal Hill was more than a landmark. It was a community of its own. There was a Mr. Hayward lived over there. He was a mail carrier. There were three or four truckers. There were three or four or maybe even five a longshoreman, there was a fisherman who worked out at the battery just down there, and it was a real nice place to grow up, I must say. It was an outport within a city. Bill grew up in a family of eight brothers and sisters, a family with no history of heart disease. Yet, ironically, Bill Kelly has a severe heart condition. It's the reason he left the CBC and land and sea almost 20 years ago. His hair is a lot longer now, and a whole lot grayer, but still, he's the same old Bill. Remember? Hi, I'm Bill Kelly. No, not him, I'm over here. That's more like it. I'm Bill, this is my friend Tom. He's a turkey. Oh! I always believed that uh, there was no point in doing anything in terms of television if you couldn't engage the audience. <laughs> My philosophy was that you had to entertain to inform, so you picked good subjects, you, you had good people, and then you used uh, whatever faculties you had, your imagination, and any story ideas that you could conjure up in your mind. And you put together the most entertaining, informative show that you possibly could. In many ways, Bill Kelly has come full circle. He started out on Signal Hill, and now he's back again, a little further down the hill, albeit, about two years ago, Bill and his wife Flo bought 19 Walsh's Square. Everything Bill always wanted in a house. Downtown, with a view, and a garden for Flo. And what a garden. Flo created all this herself, fish pond and all. She brought in fill, built retaining walls, laid patio stone, and created a little bit of paradise here at the bottom of Signal Hill. When their three children were small, Flo had no time for this kind of elaborate gardening. They lived in a subdivision then, and that's where they were in 1980, the year Bill suffered his first heart attack. He was just 35 years old and was having chest pain, pain he put down to indigestion or maybe an ulcer, till the morning his doctor finally suggested an EKG. So I went into St. Clair's and the next thing I knew, I was being wheeled through the corridors looking at, you know, a succession of these lights uh, up above. And uh, turns out I had had a heart attack three weeks earlier. I was walking around with it and that's why the pain 
had become so severe. I was panicked. Like, you know, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know where I was going to live. I, you know, because I've never experienced anybody with a heart attack or a bad heart. And like I said, there was not, nothing in his family. So, I mean, I just, I just didn't know what to do. The attack aged Bill's heart by 15 years. All but half of one artery was blocked. So Bill had open heart surgery, a quadruple bypass. A surgery doctors said would likely buy him only 10 years at best. For the longest while after it happened, um, I, was, uh, I was scared, uh, scared of dying, scared that, uh, you know, I didn't, every time I get an ache or a pain, I wonder, geez, what's happening now? You know, I remember for um, a few months, I didn't go to sleep at night. Uh, I used to be awake. Uh, listening to the radio, uh, waiting for it to become light. Well, he went out to college and made his funeral arrangements. He did, yeah, because he didn't want me to have to deal with it, you know. And he bought it home to me in a sealed envelope and told me I wasn't allowed to open it or read it. But he said all the arrangements had been made. But then one night, I remember in the middle of the night, it must have been, must have been five or six o'clock in the morning, there I was, and I said, you know, screw this. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'd rather be, you got to live. You can't, you know, you may as well be dead if you're going around like you're dead. So I decided that uh, right then and there that I was carrying on. Well, the boys are hungry today. So Bill Kelly took okay. life by the scruff of the neck and Come shook on, it in typical Bill Kelly fashion. His heart may be damaged, but it still beats with a fiery passion for people and for a cause. He's taken on many in his lifetime, and when we come back, we'll tell you about one of his greatest. I had a call from, um, from Paul down at Tropical Fish yesterday. Did you? Yeah. Bill Kelly was fully entrenched in land and sea by the time 1990 came along, the 10th year after his surgery, and the year of the biggest cuts to the CBC Newfoundland and Labrador has ever seen. All local current affairs programming, including land and sea, was axed. I was reeling, I, I was dumbfounded. I, I couldn't believe what I'd heard, and I was angry. We had no idea it was going to be anything like this. Word of the cuts came down at a studio staff meeting, a meeting that ultimately made the news. I didn't hear any mention of the Newfoundland audience who, uh, who have come to rely on the kind of work that we do in this, in this province. I'm just poisoned. I went back to the office and I was just slumped in the chair, basically. I had to call Flo to tell her that the show was gone. I mean, I thought he was joking first when he said, you know, the show has been cut. I said, what do you mean it's been cut? You know, and he said, we just got word. He said, in the studio, they just axed the show. And then the phone started ringing. The word had gotten out. Uh, ordinary people calling up saying, we heard uh, the land, you know, and there was such disappointment in their voices, and they were so supportive. They were asking, what can we do? He was determined that he was going to get it back, and, and they started the rallies and, you know, and petitions, and they started them everywhere. Rallies like this one in St. John's, petitions from taxi drivers, gas stations from all over. We're all coming back! Thank you! Bill was angry, and he harnessed the energy of the audience's anger from the capital city to the coast of Labrador. We had a guy, in fact we had several guys, but one in particular from Cartwright, Labrador, who uh, went out in his snowmobile, picking up, uh, going door to door, getting uh, you know, people to sign up and everything. And that turned into literally tens of thousands of people signed up. 
It was a busy, emotional time for Bill, and less than two months after Land and Sea had been axed, he suffered his second heart attack. Uh, we arrive at the um, emergency uh, door, and Flo ran to get the uh, emergency types, you know, come out with a, with a stretcher and that. And um, in the meantime, I got out of the car on my own, and I was staggering towards the emergency door. And these two guys were sat on, not sat, but stood on the sidewalk, more or less, just outside. And maybe they were having a smoke or something. And they see me coming, and they say, whoa, whoa, hold it. We've got to save land and sea. And I said, and I'm doing my best to say, yes, boys, you're right, and we're doing everything we can. Yeah, but we got to. Hang on, buddy. I'm moving away a little bit by now, uh, trying to get in there. And as I'm going, buddy's saying, no, no, hang on there. We got to save land and sea. I said, yeah, first I got to save myself. <laughs> Bill would have a second surgery, another quadruple bypass, another shot at another 10 years. And while he waited for his surgery, he organized the land and sea cause from his hospital bed. My God, I was frightened that he was going to have a heart attack or something. You know, even though he was in hospital, he can still have one, you know. Oh no, I was petrified. You know, I kept telling him he had to calm down. You know, you can't be doing this and, you know, I got to, he said. I got to fight for land and sea, he said. I got to get the show back. I thought that it was therapeutic. You know, uh, I was doing something uh, that was that I found that I found rewarding and useful and might have a good ending if we all kept at it. And in the end, they won. In an unprecedented decision, the CBC reinstated Land and Sea. The cancelled show was brought back as a national network program. Bill loved the show. You know, he loved doing it and he loved meeting people. The other thing is, I, I think that he wanted to prove CBC wrong. <laughs> to tell you the truth. That, you know, they, he wanted to prove to them that they were making a huge mistake by cancelling the show. You know, and uh, finally he did prove it. You know, that they did. Victory is very sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Particularly when, when what you win is uh, worth saving you know, and continues. Mr. Lane. Hey, how do you do, sir? How do you do? <laughs> Fine, how are you? You haven't changed very much in 20 no, years? No, 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 and I don't feel that way, you know. <laughs> over the course of his career with Land and Sea, Bill Kelly produced over 50 programs. But in 1993, because of his heart condition, Bill left the CBC and the show he'd fought so hard for. I said, well, Bill, you got to look at it this way. Is land and sea worth your life and dying on us? Because, I mean, that's the only way I could put it to him, because that's what he was going to do. Basically, um, Dr. Grandy, uh, in particular, felt very strongly that I would be, um, I would, I would increase my chances of a longer t life for a few extra years or many extra years, who knows. And uh, so reluctantly I did it. I hated to do it, but uh, I did it. I'm happy I did because I have gotten extra time out of it. Time with Flo, time with family, time with his little dog, Bobby. Quality time, the thing Bill Kelly now appreciates most. Things you may not know about Bill Kelly. He's a great cook. His favorite food is peanut butter. And he's a kitchen gadget guy. Check out this apple peeler. <laughs> now that's an apple. I said, I'll never peel an apple uh, again. So I rushed into Stokes 
uh, bought this machine, brought it home, and I've been doing it ever since. I make it for the youngsters, two, two little grandchildren, and uh, they're amazed by it. So every time they come out, they want me to make an apple, and then they sit there and they clap, you know. And of course, I'm in my element at that point. He's in his element when he's entertaining. He's in his element when he's in the kitchen. He's in his element when he's healthy. And Bill Kelly has been willing to risk a lot for good health, everything actually, his very life. Bill started feeling poorly again just a few years after his second surgery, so he went looking for a third, this time a triple bypass. At first, the doctors here refused to do it. They said it was just too risky, but Bill wouldn't take no for an answer. I was desperate and I was mad. You know, I wanted a, a shot, you know, uh, if, they're, if they were gonna do these things, I wanted a shot at it. And, uh, you know, um, I'll take my chances, you know, um, but, you know, please give me the chance. I understood where he was coming from, but I didn't want to risk it. I'd rather have him like he was than not have him at all, you know? And uh, like, he's my rock, he's my, he's everything. He's my best friend, you know, we're buddies. We do a lot of things together, you know, and uh, I just couldn't imagine my life without him, you know? Uh, Dr. Melvin, Dr. Kevin Melvin, Newfoundlander, Bay Bulls, uh, grew up in a fishing boat. Got hands on him like, uh, I mean, he's like a lumberjack. These great big hands. Uh, and one of the finest surgeons in North America. He said, I'm told, that if, uh, if you're willing to uh, take a chance, so am I. So I said, good enough, let's go, Doc. I just bawled, you know. I just, you know, I, I had to go home and tell the youngsters, you know, granted they're a little bit older now, but, uh, they're still only young in, your, in our minds, you know. But um, it was hard telling them. They had a hard time dealing with us, you know. And, but I don't know. It was just, I didn't think he was going to make it. I really didn't. There we are. Oh, well, looks good. Yeah. Bill did make it, but just barely. <sighs> He was a full year recovering from that surgery, good, good, the good. surgery that should have killed him. One of my doctors might be looking at. But in keeping with his natural tenacity, Bill defied the odds again, and is still around to cook Flo's favorite apple dessert. Yeah, the good Lord don't want to take him, and I'm glad. I'm happy that he's not taking him, and I hope he leaves him here until he's 80 or 90. I'd rather go before him, actually, if given a choice. I'd rather die before he did, because like, I can't imagine life without him, you know. Do you think you could have gotten through this last 30 years without Flo? Oh, no. No, I don't think so. I wouldn't have wanted to, you know. Well, we have a very strong love. He's, he's the light of my life. Bill Kelly is 66 years old now. This is his 10th year since his last surgery, and this time there can be no more. Bill's used all of his veins. There's nothing left for any more bypasses. So now, Bill and Flo take it day by day and give thanks for every single extra one they get. Bill sums it all up by referring to a land and sea show he once did in Monkstown, a community of Salvationists. We did a service down there, and this guy who was 90 years old in his Salvation Army uniform, and you know, they do testimonials. And he did a spirited testimonial. You know, he said, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready, sir. I want to go up there with you. You know, I'm here, I'm willing, my bags are packed, Lord. But, he said, I'm willing to wait my turn. No rush. I'm in no rush either. <laughs> Lately, I've been losing the darkness in my hair. The years are catching up. 
with you and me, but we don't care. We're growing old together. Growing old together is something Bill and Flo once thought they'd never have a chance to do. But they have gotten many unexpected years, many more than anybody would have thought. Ask Bill Kelly, and he'll tell you he doesn't feel cheated by life. He feels grateful. Lately, I've been watching the strands of time unwind. The years are catching up with you and me. But we don't mind We're growing old together But we won't, we won't be alone Next on Land and Sea a very rare but very beautiful blend of cultures where Sri Lanka meets Cape Royal. i gotten used to everything here and I like the weather and it's fun. The Southern Shore Sri Lankans, next time on Land and Sea. <laughs>